Much has been recorded about the North American P-51 Mustang, from it being designed in response to a Royal Air Force specification, to its ability and the significance of being able to escort long-range bombing missions into the heart of Germany, to its excellent handling characteristics. However, perhaps lesser known is the Mustang's extensive service with the Royal Australian Air Force, and how Australia, a country that before 1936 had virtually no aircraft industry, became the only country outside of the United States of America to build the Mustang under license. This is that story. The search to replace Australia's main fighter aircraft the Curtis P-40 Kitty Hawk, began in 1942. By the end of the year, it was realised that the P-40 was not up to the standards of contemporary Allied and enemy aircraft, and that Australia needed to begin looking for a new modern fighter for production within Australia. Hence, in early 1943, a mission was sent overseas to America and England in search for a new fighter aircraft, as well as a new bomber aircraft, for production back home. The mission was headed by Daniel McVeigh, then at the time Secretary of the Department of Aircraft Production, and included Lawrence Wacker, General Manager of the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, also known as CAC, and the Royal Australian Air Force representatives. They would consider four options, an improved version of the P-40 Kitty Hawk, the P-47 Thunderbolt, the Spitfire, and the P-51 Mustang, although ultimately it ended up only being a decision between the Spitfire and the Mustang. The mission was unable to reach a decision, and it took a meeting with Air Marshal Sir Ralph Sawley, Royal Air Force, who recommended the Mustang over the Spitfire, for the mission to finally agree to recommend the Mustang as the next production fighter for Australia. Wackett was one of the significant names pushing for the Mustang over the Spitfire. He believed the Mustang was a better fighter, with a higher top speed and a much greater range, which was a critical requirement for the Royal Australian Air Force. Additionally, it also had the ability to carry stores, bombs, rockets and fuel tanks under the wings and was overall an easier aircraft to manufacture. Australian Mustangs would be built and assembled by the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation and be powered by the Packard Merlin engine. The engines were both imported as well as built by CAC at their Lidcombe plant. With the Mustang chosen, the original production requirement was for 690 aircraft. Deliveries were planned for the beginning of 1944. Delays did transpire and it wasn't until late 1944 that a Mustang P-51D was delivered to Australia as a pattern aircraft. The first 80 Mustangs, designated CA-17 Mustang Mark 20s, were to be assembled from imported components. The first CAC-built Mustang took to the air for the first time on the 30th of April 1945. However, by now the original order had already been altered to 350 locally produced machines, while 285 P-51Ds and P-51Ks were to be imported from the United States. Imported P-51s began arriving in April 1945, and by September all 297 had arrived. These were made up of 83 P-51Ks, which arrived between April and August, and 214 P-51Ds, delivered between May and September. Many of these imported Mustangs were sent directly to storage. The main difference between the P-51D and K was the propeller that was fitted, and many that were imported into Australia had the ability to carry four 5-inch rockets underneath their wings. With the Second World War coming to an end, and the need for fighter aircraft significantly dropping, the order with CAC was further cut to 200 machines. By VJ Day, only 15 Mustangs had come off CAC's production line and delivered to the Royal Australian Air Force. The first 80 CA-17 Mustang Mark 20s had all been delivered by July 1946. A second batch of 170 aircraft was placed late 1946, although this was cut to only 120 and were built in a variety of configurations. This order was designated CA-18 by CAC, although the order covered a few marks. The first 14 originally planned as Mark 21s, but were modified for further reconnaissance with the addition of cameras and known as Mustang Mark 22s. All but one were handed over to the Royal Australian Air Force between July and August 1947. The last one was kept for testing and trials and was not delivered until April 1949. 
Then there was 26 Mark 21s, which arrived between August 1947 and July 1948. Then there was 66 Mark 23s, which utilised the upgraded British-built Merlin 70 engine for improved high altitude performance. The final aircraft produced was another 14 Mark 22 PRs, produced between October 1950 and August 1951 with a final CAC Mustang delivered to the Royal Australian Air Force on the 3rd of August 1951. Production for the final aircrafts were deliberately kept slow in order to keep CAC in work while the next aircraft for production was chosen. Australia's first use of the Mustang was with American-built Mustangs. They were operated by No. 3 Squadron in Italy from 1944. In Australia, the first squadrons to re-equip with the Mustang were numbers 84 and 86 squadrons, based at Townsville, Queensland. They received imported P-51Ds and P-51Ks, with the first arriving to number 84 squadron at the beginning of June 1945, with 86 squadron receiving their first in July. The Royal Australian Air Force planned to move both squadrons to Labuan, Borneo, to join number 78 wing. However, Japan's surrender on the 15th of August, and with it, the end of the Second World War, meant that this never occurred. Training still occurred until both units were disbanded, 84 Squadron on the 20th of December 1945, and 86 Squadron on the 29th of January 1946. The next squadrons to re-equip with the Mustang were numbers 76, 77, and 82 Squadrons. At the end of the war, the squadrons, flying Kitty Hawks, were based at Labuan, Borneo, and a part of 81 wing. In September 1945, the squadron started to re-equip with Mustangs in preparation for 81 wing's deployment to Japan as part of Australia's contribution to the British Commonwealth Occupation Force, BCOF. The squadrons were only equipped with P-51Ds to help simplify logistics and supply issues with the United States Army Air Force. By February 1946, all three squadrons were ready to deploy and between the end of February and the end of March 1946, the Mustangs were flown from Labuan to the new base at Iwakuni, Japan. Not long after their arrival, the squadrons were moved to Bofu. Their role while in Japan was to undertake surveillance flights. During 1948, as the Australian government started to reduce the Australian military presence in Japan, it was decided to disband No. 81 Wing, and thus disband Numbers 76, 77 and 82 squadrons. Numbers 76 and 82 Squadron were disbanded in October of that year, but the disbandment of number 77 Squadron was delayed and they kept flying operations. Eventually, in June 1950, number 77 Squadron received orders to return home and the last routine flight was conducted on 23rd of June 1950. On June 25th, 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea and the Korean War began. As a result, number 77 Squadron Orders to return home were immediately cancelled as they were called upon to fight. By the 29th, they were under the command of the 5th Air Force of the United States Air Force. And on the 2nd of July, the squadron undertook its first operations of the war, escorting Dakotas that were flying out the wounded, in addition to escorting B-26 and B-29 bombers on an offensive mission. This was followed the next day with a first ground strike mission against enemy targets. By the end of July, 77 Squadron had undertaken 280 sorties, which were a mixture of ground attack and escorting duties. This increased to 350 by the end of August, with 35 tanks, 212 trucks and other vehicles, 4 locomotives, 14 boxcars and 15 fuel or ammunition dumps being claimed. As UN forces pushed north, on the 12th of October, the unit was moved from Japan, Pohang in South Korea, allowing themselves to get closer to targets. In early 1951, the squadrons also started to receive CAC-built Mustangs, however only a few ever arrived. By April 1951, the squadron was back in Japan and rearming with a Gloucester Meteor jet fighter. By the end of the month, Mustang operations had stopped. Between July 1950 and April 1951, the Mustangs of number 77 squadron had flown over 3,200 sorties. Back in Australia, a few other units also flew Mustangs. Number 4 Squadron was the first unit to receive Mustangs built by CAC, with the first Mark 20s arriving in March 1947. The unit was renamed Number 3 Squadron in March 1948, and while they flew a single Mustang until June 1953, by early 1952 they had begun to stop flying the Mustang. 
75 Squadron also had a brief stint with the Mustang. They re-equipped with the type in July 1946 before being disbanded on the 28th of March 1948. 76 Squadron, following disbandment in Japan, was reformed in January 1949 and flew CA 18 Mustang Mark 23s until they converted to the Avalon Vampires in June 1952. Number 78 Squadron flew CA 17 Mustang Mark 20s until being disbanded in April 1948. Training squadrons also utilize the Mustangs, in particular Number 2 Operational Training Unit based at Madura, Victoria. They were utilized for training fighter pilots between July 1945 and the unit's disbandment in March 1947. Being reformed in 1952, it utilized CAC Mustangs for fighter pilot training. In 1956, flying activities stopped. The final Royal Australian Air Force squadrons that utilized the Mustang was the five squadrons of the Citizens Air Force, Active Reserve Squadrons, which were numbers 21, City of Melbourne, 22, City of Sydney, 23, City of Brisbane, 24, City of Adelaide, and 25, City of Perth. While all but number 24 squadron had given up the Mustang for vampires in 1955-56, number 24 kept flying the type until all Citizens Air Force squadrons were disbanded in 1960. And with that, after accumulating some 109,000 flying hours with the Royal Australian Air Force, the Mustang's service with the Royal Australian Air Force would come to an end. In total, 298 P-51D and P-51Ks were imported from America, complemented by 200 built by CAC. The Royal Australian Air Force also accepted deliveries of Mustangs from America for the Netherlands East Indies Air Force. Today, a number of CAC-built Mustangs exist in a range of forms, ranging from flying status to static display to under-restoration, mainly in Australia, but also in America and the United Kingdom.